APA hey, quarterbacks, football fans, here we go. Jalen Hurts breakdown. What does he do well? What does he do bad? Tons of fundamental issues here of just not getting our feet set in the right areas where we're throwing, throwing mechanics, stuff that can be corrected, not necessarily in season. Um, I don't blame it all on Jalen Hurts. I think that he was in a situation like Justin Fields where there was no reason for him to be in drop back pass scenarios 70% of the game. There's no reason that the running backs, they had to combine three or four rushes for the game. So this is very bad play calling and game strategy for Jalen Hurts. I don't think he is a true passer of the football as well as maybe they thought he was going to be. Mechanically, footwork wise, decision making, he did a lot of things in this game that affected the Eagles and it is the reason why I think they should be working quarterbacks out as we speak. Um, this is not upper level quarterback play and there's a lot of key things that I'll highlight that will show you this and easily improved but I don't think it was best suitable for his game. Uh, this game plan was best suitable for his skill set and his ability as a passer. So look at these details with me. Um, learn, ask questions, comment, whatever you think. All right, quarterbacks fans. So here we go. First play. First play we want to start with, right? Cowboys score first drive. Here come the Eagles. All right, second five in the red zone. Ball is on the 33-yard line. This is important for the points that we're going to make. Let it run. Throws a go ball versus one-on-one. -on -one. He's on the announcer said grossly underthrown, and I fully agree. All right, and what he does a great job of, and right, we're going to talk about his feet all day, is his eyes. Here, let's look at the back of you. Look at his eyes right here. That's a great job of moving or trying to freeze this post safety here, right? He's doing a great job because he knows he's got a uh, boundary wide receiver number one versus press man coverage, all right? So press man is another indicator we want to talk about because go balls have been proven, right? They do so many analytics. Is how far down the field do we want a go ball to be completed, right? Another thing, I hate how the back leg is always out from underneath his frame in the hitch. We're gonna talk about this a bunch. It's an inefficient movement, right? So now he's trying to step up. Part of the hitch is timing for the play, right? But also to protect your passes, pa tackles, pass set, right? As this D end is running the loop here, right? This You can improve your tackles pass set by moving up, right? So now it essentially kind of walls this guy off here, so room for recover for your tackle. All right, well, when your foot is outside of the frame of your hip, that is an inefficient movement. So here we go. Where does it go? Right back to under its hip. So now instead of hitching, right, tackle made the play, but this is going to be just a fundamental of footwork as a quarterback, is we never want to be at the top of our drop. At the top of our drop, here we go, in this type of situation, right? back foot out of our frame, putting all of our weight on our front shoulder, front hip, right? We wanna be loaded in the back hip. That's what we do to throw a deep ball, right? And I'll have a link here, an old video. Um, the, the motion's changed a lot since then, but I'm gonna put a link right here on the video for you to see how to throw a deep ball. And one of the number one things to drive a ball is get your feet under you, right? Get in a nice athletic position. This is a false step, a wasted movement. You're not helping your tackles pass set at all. And the back foot, watch the back foot. Goes right back where? Now we're in ankle, right? Ankle, knee, hip alignment. That is an athletic position, like a squat, right? We're athletes. Now he pushes to throw, and he kind of puts a ton of air on it. You can see back leg comes through, right? There's a lot. I could pick apart his throwing motion. But when you come over the top and try and put a lot of air on this ball, you're just never going to get it there in the NFL. These guys are going fast, all right? So let's go back to the beginning of the play, right? And we said the ball is on the 33-yard line, all right? So I want you guys to, you know, your quarterback, take the notes here. What is the right depth for go balls, right? And it's a window. If it's off zone, we want it 44 to 46 yards down the field because that receiver has to eat up cushion to then win. So he's going to pass the guy further down the field, right? And if we're going to look at this play, all right, so here's press man at the bottom of the screen. Off zone at this side of the screen, right? So 
there's that much more room for that guy to have to run by and win. And look, we're on the 32 yard line. You're running out of uh, field space. There's just no room left. So as a quarterback, you tell your quarterback, yeah, find the one on one matchup that's going to win sooner. So I love his decision. Does a great job freezing the safety on left. Um, I teach more down the middle because looking all the way left can be hard to go from this angle to that angle. That's far for the eyes, and eyes are a big vision for throwing the ball vertical. All right, so he picks the right side, but then when he goes to throw it, let's see where it lands. It's caught at the four-yard line, right? So in reality, he's throwing a 27-yard go ball. So from the 33-yard line with 10 more uh, yards for uh, – the end zone, right? If it was off zone, we'd think about 44 yards, we'd back corner, right? Well, versus press man, our window is a little different. It's about 30, 33 to 36 yards versus press man is where a go ball should be caught. All right, so where does he catch that? It it's press man. He takes the press man side, like his decision, right? Guy doesn't necessarily win, but there's still time to win. When that ball is thrown here, this is Jalen, he is a fast wide receiver, Rieger, right? That's the whole point. That's the point where now he's going to run and separate, right? With the ball down the field, DTF, down the field. All right, so press man window, we want 33 to 36 yards. It's caught at the four-yard line, about a 28-yard throw, just severely underthrown. And that's just about feel. A lot of it's about, hey, are our feet under us? Are we maximizing our drive to drive the ball vertically down the field? All the fundamentals that go into the passing game that all – APA certified quarterbacks have, right? So next play, we're going to rip through these a little faster. All right. And this one, this one's a completion, but I want to just start to talk about our feet angles, right? So right now I would say he's set on a 45 angle. Let me push it back a little more, right? So bam, two, three, last two steps. He's set the back hip, back foot at a 45 angle, which isn't bad. But when you're throwing perimeter throws, hitches, outs, comebacks, which you'll see later in this game, he cons consistently sets on middle of the field with his body and tries to make it right with his arm. So now we're going we're gonna to watch his uh, front foot. Watch the front foot and front hip now fully open the gate. So he just opens the gate to try to make it right. And now look, his arm, see the trajectory of his shoulders are going like that? Right, his right shoulder's way above his left shoulder. That's because he's trying to throw over his left hip. So he's overcompensating with his arm because of bad footwork. Right? So yeah, he's overcompensating. It's a completion, whatever. Look at the back throw, back of his foot as he makes the throw. You know, when you have to overcompensate, of course, your back foot's gonna come flying off the ground. Right? We know we don't want a quarterback to be throwing at this type of an angle. We want to be upright rotational passers, right? So just the first example early in the game of him uh, not having good feet, constantly throwing over his hip, just poor mechanics, poor fundamentals. So let's see this play here. This play is now decision-making, right? It's third and five. It's the same drive, right? We got a little bit of cushion. We didn't get a first down. What's our goal when we're coming out is let's get a first down, all right? So third and five. What can we not have happen here? We can't have a hold. We can't have a safety. This is a, the spot on the field where you got to be careful with how much improvising, right, which is pretty much his whole game, and how much extending of the play that you do. Three hitch, hitch, hitch. Clock's got to be going off inside, outside, right? Look at our pocket. It's everyone is scrambling. These guys are worried, right? This is where holding calls happen, right? for eventually just to throw away. So we got to be decisive. If At the end of the day, early in the game, it's 7-7. Seven, seven. Young quarterback, pretty much a rookie. It's your first start. If you have to step up in the pocket here and get down and protect the punt, protect it. Throw it away. By all means, do something other than potentially string out the play and put your team, at your O-line in a bad scenario. And he does this a lot. He is very um, timid when trying to um, get off his first or second read. He just decides to run or scramble from the pocket and scramble and scramble lanes that are not helpful to the O-line. And that's something that I could rant on for hours is I hate the new age college quarterbacks. Everybody wants to just vacate the pocket left or right, depth and on the run. 
with our body momentum running totally off the screen, off our back foot. It's not good. That's for another video. All right, so here, this play. This is not Jalen Hurts' fault. Look at this. Look at this. This is a great play call, all right? So we've got – let me draw it up for you here. We've got guard, kicking out, tackle, wrap. And he's going to wrap and seal this guy. We've got man, right? Man, man, man. So, hey, do we block receivers on man-to-man? -man? No, we run off. Run off. Get these guys' backs turned. All right, and they highlighted Micah Parsons, who's a, obviously a young stud, but he's not even a DN. Unfortunately, it's a tackle for loss. But look, this guy's wrapping for here. Jalen Hurts on the perimeter, second and one. This could have been a huge play, not Jalen Hurts' fault. Um, unfortunately, we'll get the back view here. You're going to see here. Here's our kickout. Here's our kickout. 69. Let's go. 69. Blow him up. Blow him up. I think he trips. There's a trip here, right? He, he falls on someone's ankle there, loses center of gravity. I mean, that happens, unfortunately. You know, he trips, has no power on the block, clogs it up. Mike Parsons makes the play on what should be a huge play. So that's thanks because now we're getting to use Jalen Hurts in the sense of, okay, let's use him as a runner, right? What do the Ravens do so well with Lamar? Is they run him with design quarterback runs. That's one that would have got out the gate. It's a shame for the Eagles that they didn't get that one done. So here, let's go back to what he probably does the worst of is drop back pass. So we have a three by one triple slant concept of some sort um, or one and three are on a slant. Regardless, we're going to talk about body position when throwing the slants. And uh, I'll cut up a version of the Justin Herbert. If you haven't seen my Herbert versus Mahomes breakdown yet, man, Justin Herbert, textbook, and Mahomes, textbook at throwing slants. Right? We don't look at the receiver right away, which we'll get a later clip of that. But we set to a 45 angle of where he's going to be, and we throw to a spot. We look at receivers. right? Eyes straight on the receiver. We throw it behind them. right? There is a window here. These slant balls get completed by Tom Brady, Pat Mahomes, Justin Herbert, good quarterbacks all the time, right? And this isn't a um, ridiculously challenging concept. This is stuff that you do in college, in high school. This is quick game. Let's see, right? Inside leverage stinks. We don't love the win, but where's the ball? It is way behind him, all right? The next closest defender is in here over number two. So there is a perfect throwing lane. It's not much. Right there, low and inside for a slant. We've seen uh, back in the Patriots days, Brady to Edelman. Get the low and inside ball that protects your wide receiver when you're inside um, the tackle box, right? So that's just a blatant miss. And these are little things like, oh, it's a bad route. Look at where's his eyes? He is grilling this outside slant, grilling it. When you look at my young quarterbacks, I've hammered you guys all the time. In high school, you look at the slant, you throw behind it. It's one-on-one -on -one rules of accuracy. When we throw back shoulders, what I tell you, throw it right at the wide receiver because he's going to move and the ball is going to be two yards behind him. All right, on a slant, what should you not do? Look three yards in front of him and you'll put it right on his numbers. So bad eyes just, I mean, just overall just shows that he's not super developed in the passing game, even though I totally respect his work ethic, everything about this guy. He's a class act. All right, and here's a play that in the Herbert, uh, in the, the Kansas City, um, Justin Herbert video that I have, Kansas City hits this play as well. And this is an RPO, right? Well, split, split, split zone action here. And they ran this, a variation of this a couple times. So we're going to get flow, 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 zone, zone, zone. This guy's cutting backside to pick up the backside end. Um, and we're going to be reading this defender. If he adds to the box, then we read a two-man RPO concept. We would then read the who becomes the flat player. Okay? We have an immediate flat stretch by the tight end. So that's why even Mahomes did the same thing. You get this guy who circled, you get him running. 
cool. Take the stick right behind him. Boom, take it. I don't hate it. I like it. It's a good read. Jalen Hurts, the best thing he did all night was execute his RPOs. Uh, he made good decisions, and I think that's, you know, his best attribute right now, which isn't saying a whole lot, but all right, here we go. Back to just mechanics. So this is a big play action. You already know you're getting heated up based on the front, right? We've got an idea that something's coming, um, but we've got bodies. We've got numbers here to protect it. So he's going to do what's called a play action seven. All right, so let's count her steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, here we go. Talk about inefficient moving, right? And as a quarterback coach, I don't know what you're teaching these guys. Not his person, not his team coach, but whoever he's working with fundamentally, right? W what's going on here? This is he is an incredible athlete. It, I equate it to doing a hand clean. Is getting under that back hip at the top of a drop. That is a poor pocket. That is a poor um, execution of the top of the drop. Which then let's see his first step. It's a crossover. Doesn't really move at all. Yes, this is a blown. Protection, absolutely. I'm being nitpicky here. But there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? A lot of times you'll see quarterbacks when they know on a quick seven, it's supposed to be a quick seven play seven, right? Quick play seven. Not a five. Play action five step happens faster, right? You got two extra steps here. I'd like him to see a little quicker with his drop and have better efficiency movement wise. I don't know whoever should hitch like that. That is a wasted movement. And then now he can't push off, right? Like a basketball player playing defense, trying to go this way. You push off your instep of your right foot to go left. All right. Well, now how much power are you creating, right? As an efficient move mover when your foot's that removed from your hip? You can't. Bad mechanics. Bad mechanics. All night long. Bad mechanics. Right? And these are little details. They're little details, right? That's not all on him. Right, we're, we're being hard on him right now, but at the quarterback position, when things go wrong, just like he said, and I'm sure he can agree to this, we want the blame, all right? I coach my guys. You got to envy that each quarterback in that locker room wants to take the blame for his team because you can hide a guard. Okay, yeah, their guard's out. You got a rookie uh, guard starting from Alabama, right? You can hide a guard here and there throughout the game. You can't hide your quarterback, all right? A quarterback can bring up the play of other guys on a regular basis. And that's what we need Jalen Hurts to do. All right, let's go another play here. So this is one of his best throw of the night, right? And this is him just being an athlete. And this is him, you know, improvising and seeing the guy open, making the throw, right? Good, ball doesn't spin, you could tell. I mean, not the greatest form throw, but he's on the move, he's under duress, right? But great throw by him, hate that there's a flag on it. Tough night by his O-line. Next play here, third quarter now, second half. You know, we're still in this game. We're still in this game. Nice, right? This is something that we're gonna see in a little bit, right? He's at the top of his drop. When I teach um, this type of a concept, right? We gotta understand that this is some variation of drive, um, could be, um, a, like when you want to have a, a flood to one side and you want to do some sort of corner with a go and you need a flat stretch out of a two by two and you don't want to run a, a, a trips set, you bring your flat stretch from this side or you don't want to have the running back on the flat stretch, you bring it from the back side. So it could be a flood variation, could be any variation of a dig where we get high lows, right? With a run through like a dagger, right? Anything like that. You need to set at the very minimum as a quarterback at the top of your drop, your lower half on a 45 degree angle where you're in some vicinity to make all the throws. And he, not bad, but you see that open foot step where he opens his foot? That he's making up for not having a good drop by just opening his foot and trying to make it right with his hand, right? But when you do that, you kind of block out any potential to throw with your lower half, all right? Puts it on the money, completion, right? We're gonna see in a little bit where it doesn't work out so well. So how do we get how do we do bet? How do we operate better as a passer? We work hard on the drop, get our body in the right position to make all of the throws. Easier said than done when people are trying to kill you, right? Here we go. Another rep here. All right, same thing now. 
This guy's right here and it's de deceiving, right? Crossing routes are deceiving because they are low as a form of depth, five yards, right? Anywhere to three to seven yards. That gets to be a sharp angle when we're talking about our back foot set. So I would want my back foot set to at least the outside edge of the tackle box for 45 angle throws, knowing that I would then step a little wider to make the throw. Well, he's set on this line. That's where the guy is now. All right. And then has to throw wider. So he's set here throwing to here. That's how you know he's he's disconnected his lower half. Now he's here just trying to dart out to the right, which we have to be able to do this as passers, but it's a lot easier when we get our feet involved and our feet in a better throwing lane to the target. So now he's trying to make it right with his arm. Granted, I think this wide receiver, this tight end's got to catch this. He's got his hands flipped like this, you know. It hits him. I don't blame him. The announcers all night, they're blaming him. What can we do to help ourselves, quarterbacks? Get our feet set on perimeter angles when we're throwing perimeter throws. And a uh, whole perimeter angle breakdown on how it fits into coverage and offensive scheme is on my private stuff. So if you want to subscribe to our, our my monthly channel where you get uh, pr private videos that are going to a little more depth of how to really operate all the angles that I teach, reach out to me privately and we can get that done. All right. Let's see, is the same play here? Nope. New play. All right. So this, now this is a read and, and I will post this. I'll add a link to this. I haven't made the video yet, but this is a play that the uh, let's see, Lando Apollo, Orlando Apollo's, but the TSL Conquerors, right? Spring League Conquerors. We use this a ton. All right. You can work back out. We want to rub, natural pick, wheel. Let's see, I don't even know what they did at the top, but if they did dog, same thing we did. Oh, no. So they sit over the ball, uh, probably a level, hitch level, slot fade. All right. So that's a nice three answer, but not what we did. Regardless, you're working the backside side. First one high, man, 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 one high, right? We want that rub. Let's go get a rub and let's get a pick and throw a touchdown, Jalen Hurts. If it's zone, one high zone, then yeah, maybe we throw a back shoulder when this guy runs over the top. Let's watch our pick here. I want you guys to watch this guy and this guy. Both man eyes. Stop. Jalen, what are we looking at here, right? What are we looking at? We have to identify this as this is the look we want. The running back, what's he looking at? He's like, oh, perfect. I'm getting my rub. This is the my shot for the game. Let's run down this rail for an absolute touchdown. Post safety's in the middle of the field. He's not going to get there. It's a two ball. We're thinking 15 to 20 yards for the over the top. He throws back shoulder. All right, the read is if the guy goes over the top, throw back shoulder. If the guy goes underneath, throw over the top. All right, the running back's ready for the over the top. This guy fights underneath. Just bad read, and this is plays that now 27-7. Okay, 27-14, right? This is the, the type of low-level quarterback play that should have Philly working guys out. You know, I mean, it's a combination of the offensive scheme that I, I don't blame Hurts fully, but a couple of these are definitely on him. Let's go next play here. This one will kill a coordinator. And a quarterback coach, it's second and 10. What's the number one thing we don't want on second and 10? Is don't let us get to third and 10. Don't let us get to third and 10. Let's see, is this a designed, designed bootleg? No, right? Look at just because this, uh, this DN takes an inside move and we get a wash, perfect. Hey, Jalen Hurts, all we need is one po one or two pocket movement steps and settle and settle instead he leaves the pocket yeah covered covered we don't know what the rest of the concept is there's a inside here we probably got something over the top two low players you know there's probably something in the middle here that has some value after one second we can't leave the pocket this is a win this is a win for the o-line instead now we've totally left our passing profile we've turned into a runner this is your version of athlete at quarterback. Okay, third and 10. That was a totally wasted play for no reason other than not having proper – look at at the snap. Yeah, you get a little green, right? A little bit of a 
I mean, a little bit of Jersey, a little bit of white comes in there. We win. Stop, 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 stop. Unfortunate, right? Exiting the pocket way too soon. If you're a mobile quarterback. You got to know that winning from the pocket is the name of the game in the NFL. And no athlete, even Lamar Jackson, they don't use him like this, which I think Lamar is a way more talented uh, athlete, which I'll get into. But here we go again, right? So let's go to this. No talented, let me finish the point. Ta no talented athlete can come to the NFL and play the quarterback position and just try and run, especially on passing downs, right? Situational football, all of that goes into play. We got to be game managers, right? We got to understand the game of football. And if you're not a game manager in the NFL, you're going to be on the bench. You're going to be cut. All right, here we go. We got a double screen concept. Okay, yeah. This defensive end throws the brakes on. I get it, alarming. What's the point of having this double screen on? Oh, excuse me. Here to there. Let's watch his eyes. Boom. We have a guy wide open. Got both our linemen, man, coming out here. This is perfect. The backside of this is absolutely perfect. Throw the ball. There, throw it. Throw it. It's not too late. It's not too late. All right. And then now, are we a dynamic runner? Are we Lamar Jackson? Let's see. You evaluate it. Is Jake, can Jalen Hurts get it done as a running back? I don't see it, personally. Yeah, he's dynamic enough to make things happen as a – designed runner with the right box with the right protection like the right run scheme and, and you know if it's fitted but i don't think he's making extra people miss in the run game all right here we go and a lot of times in, in this game we see wide receivers moving in motion without him sending them um putting their hands up before the play what's our operation quarterbacks we have to handle the formation the shifts the motions that doesn't that doesn't give me a resounding relief as a quarterback coach, seeing other personnel and players saying like, hey, what's going on, right? That's on the quarterback. Look at that. All right, so here we go. Let's see what this play is. All right, so I think he's getting frustrated now. Second and 10. Now he's leaving the pocket early. In the second half, this became the show. Three and a hit. She stopped. You know, we're just at the top of our progression in a five-step concept. Motioning that shouldn't we don't even know if they're supposed to motion head down running. It's bad ball, right? And that's not what you want out of it's one thing if this is like once or twice, but they threw the ball, they dropped back to throw the ball a ridiculous amount of times. All right, let me see what we got here. All right, and this is in a little bit wrong order here. Let me move this. Here's the play that I want you to see, I believe. We'll go back to that other one. Not his fault here. This one was probably throw the best play of the day. I mean, best in the pocket. I wanted to highlight for him, right? Look at this. I mean, this is the kind of stuff they wanted him for. He's getting heated up, right? O-line has a fit, makes a move, keeps his head up, throws a, throws a bomb, right? It's 50-50 ball. It's underthrown, right? We're not saying Jalen Hurts has Patrick Mahomes. Like arm strength, but hey, he made a play. All right. Next play here, still in the middle of third quarter. And this is just an example of him not being a confident passer, but they run this exact same concept later, and he screws them for the play here, right? Second and one. Hey, DN crashes, right? This is an RPO. This is truly a run pass option. Why, guys? We know. You watch my videos, you know. Block, block, getting the second level, one of the best centers in football. He's already passed the line of scrimmage. Tackle, he's at the linebacker, past the line of scrimmage. The ball needs to be thrown right away. DN crashes, it's a pull. This guy is really window dressing. He's trying to bring this man guy out. Look at nobody here, right? Linebacker's caught for the run. And then the thing that I don't like is this throw. It just seems... Like, it's a four-yard throw. It's a dart. It's just dying, right? And, and that's one where, you're like, I just want him to look more confident as a passer. And I think that's the overarching uh, example here is that, hey, like, he's not. And he just fundamentally isn't a great passer, all right? This is probably his most dynamic run of the day. However, is this a design quarterback run? And no. 
This is empty. You got five options here. But four-man rush, pitch. Look at this pocket, guys. This is a win across the board. Man, it's a win across the board. Why are we leaving the pocket? Okay, yeah, you're a dynamic runner, but there's dynamic players all over the field, and I don't think he has that Kyler Murray, Lamar Jackson wiggle. And, and that's why it's like you can't be that kind of a quarterback and just, oh, five guys on a concept, let me just break the pot, a clean pocket and go. That's what gets you benched in the NFL, right? There's too many good athletes on the defense. That is very low-level quarterback play. And this is going to be low-level quarterback, right? Now, this is okay. Did he make the right read? Yes. They went fast. They went hurry up. They schemed them, right? They get this perfect rub here, right? Scheme, guys wide open in the flats, all right? We go back to if you go if you watch the Herbert play where it's a touchdown on the similar idea. It's a stick with a flat, but they went under center. Herbert read it outside in, as you should. Okay. When you read it outside in, you should be having your feet on a perimeter angle set to the pylon as righty throwers, right? And hey, if you want to know more about all my fundamentals, get with us online, right? There's way more details that you can learn about playing the quarterback position other than this. This is scratching the surface and it's sad that we're in the nfl here scratching the surface okay eventually now gets to a 45 angle where the guy's at right now if this guy comes through running right if it's clean right you get one step in the nfl that's open okay it's wide open being on a 45 angle throwing over our hip hips going back right losing our hips so just bad execution of being a rotational passer which Tons of quarterbacks are like that, right? Because there's not one way to throw the ball, but there's certain ways to be more effective and get more trajectory and drive. One of them is keeping your hips under you. So back foot pops up, hips under you, thrown over the shoulder. Look at the angle of our shoulders. Bad form all day, plus a bad drop. Quick game footwork, sure. Get your body set to the pylon. Where's the ball go? Behind him, right? If there's tight coverage, that's a pass breakup. Right, so we can't have that. We just can't. Let's look at his feet. One step, right? We should be taking a it's quick game. I get it. Eyes on a 45, feet down the middle. I want I the way I teach, if I'm reading, say you're throwing a hitch, say you're throwing a quick out, and this is you know a two by two twins look on the right, and it's not a condensed split. You would have your feet, this back foot, you'd want to. Get your feet all the way around so your back foot set on a 45, set on a really 45 to perimeter, eyes on 45. And then you finish the foot as you get your eyes all the way around, watch your, his feet will come around. He goes from middle to 45. You go from 45 to perimeter angle with your feet. Eyes still can just be on the flat player until it's time to throw. Freeze him, keep it there. It's man, so there's no flat player. But if this was zone, that's the whole way we teach of throwing angles, Manipulating the underneath coverage with our eyes and throwing where our feet are. All right. I'm already starting to give y'all too much, right? Hips, back, all arm, right? Knee bent. Perimeter throw, right? The ball needs to be here, right? Put it in front of them. It's safe. That's where the guy's running. We throw it behind guys. They have a better chance of dropping the ball. All right. Just footwork 101. And uh, it's unfortunate, you know, that. Guys in the NFL level are, are playing with, you know, this is bad for Philly. This is a blowout, and there's a lot that could be fixed at the quarterback position. And He's not the only one. Tons of quarterbacks in the NFL constantly trying to make throws with their feet not set the right way. All right, and here is the play I was looking for before. Um, all right, cool play here, right? And I like this, but it shows how kind of his arm angle – so this is an RPO similar to the one we showed earlier. That's a little different, actually. He pulls. He's got perimeter blockers. I think this is truly a screen. I'm not sure if he's reading anything here because this should be a perimeter throw all the way. I forget what the flag was. It was legal man downfield because this is a forward pass. But I really want to just highlight his throwing motion here. All right, quarterbacks that come very over the top here, this all it needs is a little dart. Ah, it's not that bad. It's being nitpicky. But when you see this – Right? That's breaking your chain. We want to be tall, upright, rotational passers. It just doesn't look good. It goes back to another clip of him, you know, not looking fluid and natural as a thrower. Back foot off the ground. It's so like back foot and front foot at the same time. 
that's a no-no when it comes to throwing quarterbacks, right? right? You step and throw with the front leg, keep the back leg back, just poor mechanics, right? And that's more, not X's and O's, that's straight. Now that private work, how I work with my quarterbacks one-on-one, how do we maximize uh, rotational power, transfer of weight, and stability for balance and accuracy, right? That's how those things work. Nothing to do with X's and O's. Hey, someone hit his DM. Someone saw her hit him working with me in the offseason. All right. This, I don't blame him. Other than throwing a slant and immediately looking at it, which is, you know, obviously a no-no. Looking at it immediately. Diggs, he's playing off. The two things the corner is looking for is quick game footwork. Yeah, one step drop. Okay, time to be aggressive. Eyes. He's looking at receiver's eyes and quarterback's eyes. Back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. The receiver screws him by immediately looking at the quarterback. The scheme screws him because it's a one-step slant versus off coverage. You don't ever threaten the receiver, the GB vertical. And then you got the quarterback and the wide receiver both looking at the spot they're going to. Just made Trayvon Diggs look all pro, which might end up being because this is just low-level quarterback play with eyes, deception, throwing mechanics. And look at this. How many times are you going to drop back throw with a – essentially a rookie quarterback who hasn't necessarily been proven as a passer, right? So tough here. All right, a little break there. Technical difficulty, we're back. All right, this is the play we're looking for. So right now, very almost exact read from earlier, right? We're going to have some three-man concept. Not sure if they're running the same one. Didn't check yet. The same wheel with a slant little chip, right? Here's more of a zone. Maybe it's man. We don't know. It's one high. Less man eyes across the board. So post snap, we'll get it figured out. All right. Let's see. What's he looking at? All Jalen Hurts needs to do is read. Does he go over the top or underneath? If he goes over the top, throw the back shoulder. If he goes underneath, throw over the top. All right. So his feet, though, are also set here. Now, throw over the top. He's late. He's a little bit late. This ball could have been thrown earlier. And, and this isn't necessarily a wheel. It's more of a flat route, but it's the same read, right? You see that defender go over the top? Get it to him right away. And look at his feet set on a 45 angle and trying to throw a perimeter angle with your feet not set, all arm, over the top, over the shoulder, that big over-the-shoulder release that's weak and doesn't have a lot of power accuracy. All right, look at that. Feet literally blocked off here. Ball trying to go here. It doesn't work. Ball's dying. Yeah, it should be caught. Ball's late. Just bad feet. Doesn't help you for the read. Consistent. That's what we've seen all, all game long. Next play now. Now we're in third and 11. Man, we'd love to just complete that for five yards. This is something else. Get an all up look. They bring it out, bail it out. Three, four, five. Another poor hitch, right? Let's talk fundamentals, right? I mean, this is just bad body movements, right? Top of our drop, we want weight in the back hip, not our short, right? The seesaw motion, shoulders there, shoulders there, right? And then now you go to hitch and now the shoulders are level. It's like, there's no need for that, right? Foot goes right back under ankle, knee, hip alignment. And now that big over the shoulder throwing motion. Or your head, right? Keep your head still. Keep your head still. Let's watch his head. Jerking left, back foot comes up. Now it's a man throw, right? It's man. It's on the run. You get to your crossers versus man. You throw it and you lead a guy versus man-to-man -man coverage out in front. All right? Diggs, yeah, he breaks on it. Fine. It's the NFL. This is open. Throw the ball anywhere through here, right? Stops and jumps, right? So he's no longer accelerating the wide receiver this way. He's going up. So therefore, right, he's not crossing the field as far because the ball is behind him. On the shoulder, yeah, it could be a contested catch. Sure, but ball out in front, he's still running. Right, ball out in front here, and it's a catch. Guaranteed catch, right? Third and 11, just little things, right? Man-to-man, -man, windows are tight. It's on the quarterback to make the throw. Third and four. Great job, right? Still fading away. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five. Just slow drops the whole game. We'll fade back. And you see where he drops his leg. So he's actually. He
he's actually dropping his front leg here just back so this isn't weight distribution this isn't weight transfer right that's turning the hip and just all arming it right it's short throw it's over the middle he gets it done yeah there's people in his face can he fully step into it not really but that just goes back to like the inconsistency in his throwing motion that we've seen come into play when he doesn't have people in his feet right so you have less power down the field you drive the ball less right on right, the next clip here so first down very next play we go fast i think they, yeah they line up fast no huddle same concept we threw earlier where he threw it right away to this guy right it's an rpo it's the nfl you've been doing this in college all these co it's college offense rpo rpo is there a quarterback coach in america saying hey you can't pump fake an rpo if you pull it and the ball is not out immediately, illegal man downfield, illegal man downfield, right? That's the line of scrimmage. They're way past it. So now he pump fakes when there's a – this guy's turning, right? He's the, the extra window dressing to make this perimeter nice and soft. This guy's wide open with leverage. Give him the ball. It's first and ten. We just got one of our first earned first downs on third down. Let's move the sticks. Completions, completions. Instead, we're holding the ball, we're pump faking, we're lobbying. Yeah, it's a great throw, right? Like, good, touch throw, awesome, right? You think, great throw. Decision making. Ball, get it out, get it out now. Guys, that's be flat. Get it out right away, we're going to get a flag. What happens? Yeah, we string out the play. We don't take a wide open first down. That could have turned into 15. Instead, we have a 10-yard penalty. Um, so that's just knowing your play, right? And here they highlight it here. And crashes. Ball, 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 ball. You can get up field easily. There's a blocker here. There's a defender out here turning and running that way with his back to the target. He catches here, puts his foot in the ground. I mean, it could be 20 yards, and it's just not a flag, right? So that's most importantly. Jalen Hurts, we got to understand all our RPOs. For the most part of this game, he did a good job handling um, all, those, all those different reads. All right, here we go. Let's see, is this an RPO or is this play action? Let's look at the line. Look at the line across the board. All right. All taking pass sets. Play action. All right. Double slant concept. All right. Obviously, this hook player, when you see a hook player there, an outside leverage corner here, a lot of times without even seeing the back end coverage, you got to know it's cover two. First and 15, it's passing down. Late in the game, makes sense. He eats up that slant. Perfect window naturally for double slant versus cover two. Right off that will backer. Easy throw. All you got to do is freeze this backer. Make him take that slant and then throw it right off his shoulder, right into that window. Instead, we're staring down receivers, which what happens, you throw it at a receiver and then look at, yeah, there's a guy in his way a little bit, but hips going back. No transfer weight to the target. That stinks, right? Ball. Ball's thrown fully behind him because he's looking at the receiver, throwing at a receiver, just like earlier coaching point. The same mistakes over and over. PBU, Trevon Diggs, standing over your wide receiver. Wide receiver saying, put the ball in front of me, man. Like, we got this guy thinking he's all pro when he might very well be. Look at his ball placement. Put it here. Stopping, jumping, ball's behind him. Just bad, 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 bad. All right, consistent. We see this this whole game here. Now, this is one, you know, earlier in the game, we talked about vertical number one ball and all the rules associated, right? So if you haven't seen it, scroll back down. Post safety, right, in the middle of the field. Earlier in the game, he did a good job looking left, throwing back right, just was short on the ball. Now this time, second steps in the ground. The receiver, guys. Right, and I'm doing a lot of this just off the top here. The receiver is four yards off the ball. Or already, already, excuse me, staring at the receiver. What do we think the post safety is doing now with seeing eyes that way? Right, all my DB coaches. Man, track the quarterback's eyes, hitch, ball. Now he finally throws this one. All right, well, who's been watching the whole time? This 50-50 ball. The other one, safety's nowhere to be found because he froze him. Now he looks out of the whole way, leaves the ball inside, right? Number one is the outside release. Uh, I think it was outside release, but regardless, 
this is the red line in between the hash, side hash, side line, and the numbers. We want to be on it or outside of that red line. So he's throwing it inside even closer to this post safety, right? Underthrown, jump ball. I mean, receivers got to be saying, man, I'm winning first press. And you're staring at me at five yards, right? That will never be a winner for vertical number ones. Fourth and nine. What's our rule on fourth and nine? You got to throw it. Got to throw it. What's another thing we hate is why there's so many receivers looking around for maybe another motion, hands in the air, the snap. Are we forgetting motions? Are we forgetting shifts? Are we just having a quarterback meltdown? What's going on? It's fourth down. Throw it. Anywhere. 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 Anywhere but this. Anything but this. That doesn't feel good in a blowout game, man. That's tough ball. Tough ball. Let's see. Now we get a hold here. Hands up. Ball flat. Throw it in the flat. Yeah, it's fourth and nine. You throw the flat at the top of your drop right here. Ball. Not getting hit yet. Two back foot hits. Take a put it right here. And so it has your hips on an angle to the perimeter. You lead a perimeter throw, which hasn't happened all game, but is how football works. You lead him there. Right? He catches that and race to the sideline first down. It's third and nine. Now we're scrambling. Now we're running. Now we're doing all this stuff. Okay, we're out of the pocket. Sideline. Sideline. Put a ball right there. We got to get rid of the ball. Back shoulder. Anything. Anything. Anything but take that sack. Morale killer. Great throw, right? Same concept, I believe. It's just another, another flood family out of two by two. The backside over. Backside over. Good. When he steps into the throw, like any quarterback in the NFL, if you got a clean pocket and you you step into the throw, it doesn't matter what your form is. Right? I can pick apart his form all day, right? Decent stride. I mean, who remember when Tebow was getting criticized? That dropping of the ball. Right this way. We never want to drop the ball. That's just wasted movement, not a fast release. One leg balance, right? Back leg's already off the ground. Hips that way. Tough to drive a ball. Hey, makes an accurate throw. You don't have to have perfect form to make accurate throws. Having perfect form gives you the better percentage chance of, hey, let me hit that same throw 9 out of 10, 8 out of 10, right? And uh, unfortunately, when you don't have a clean pocket, when you – all the other things – underlying things you're not going to make throws out of at a consistent efficiency with bad form so you can yeah you can with bad form you make good throw open pocket stepping into it right i think this is one where it's just how many how many holding calls are you going to force your o-line to get all right we're so, yeah there's there's color here it's the nfl man there's color it's a little color we're fitted there fitted there we got three on two there you know, it's not perfect. Bam. He gets his center. He gets his center of gravity. That's a wall. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop. Just move. Just pocket movement. Back foot move and settle. Right? Read it out. We're just not living in a in a, a passing profile long enough. We're not giving ourselves a chance to be a, a passer down the field. More fourth quarter action here. I mean, let's look at the pocket. Is this an early exit? Look fitted, fitted. Got a chip with a tackle there. Fitted, everything's fitted. Maybe one move here. You gotta practice what Tom Brady talked about and see if you see color here, then the one move was there. It was going that way, one step. Then now he's fitted his block up even better by our pocket movement. Instead, now, this is a, instead of moving this way to finish his block, now we move this way and create a potential hold, potential hold, right? So it's about feeling it. We got to emulate Tom Brady. Only move as much as you need to. Now we're throwing off our back foot. All right. You know, just it's, you can't live with a quarterback who's just in scramble drill and his only 
capabilities really is design QB run, but then you barely call any design QB runs, call a drop back pass the whole game. And then call drop back pass from the pocket. And now we're just trying to live in a chaos passing game world. Scramble drill. Boom, nice pass, right? Good. He can make it happen, open throw, right? Don't love that. Finish, right? So, I mean, there's some promise there. But to be a starter in the NFL, you got to make those. Those are the easy ones. You know, so he does the bare minimum. Um, here's a flat throw in the game now. Let's talk about his angle, right? Throwing angles. Opening that front foot, just opening the gate. Instead of having his line already set here to then straight line, transfer your weight at the target, right? Consistently throwing in good form to make good throws at a higher rate. Just open the gate, all arm. All right, hey, it works on the short side of the field, right? We're on the short side. This is a short throw. What happens on the field angles? These angles change depending on where the ball is, right? And I, you got to love Jalen Hurts. He's a competitor. He's working his butt off. I don't think he's been told some of the things we're talking about. And, you know, here's the last play. Just sum it up. Stop right there. Stop right there. We might be good there. Might be able to settle, right? But he's just so ready to live in a chaos world. Let's just run, 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 run. Now, like, first and 10, right? This is, there's never usually a good throw going on in this scenario. Pause. One. The guy he's looking for started back here and had to move closer to the ball. So slight underthrow, which look at his body position. How are you going to make a perfect throw when you're running full speed 30, in a different direction, trying to throw 30 yards down the field? Three guys to our one offensive guy. How? Who knows? Good for him. Hopefully it made, it made the score look a little better, feel a little better after the game. Tough, man. Fundamentals destroyed this game. Decision-making destroyed this game. Definitely things that can be corrected. Um, is it in-season corrections? Not necessarily. I think the Eagles should be, you know, working a lot of guys out and trying out different options or use him in a totally different manner. He's not a drop-back passer, right? Use him in a more uh, situation like Lamar. Put him in called with the purpose plays, bootlegs, quarterback design runs, RPOs, right? Get him out of all this drop back pass. I think uh, that plays a lot of the part. So like it, subscribe it, show us some love, comment. What other videos you want me to break down? What do you want to hear what a quarterback would be saying to these guys on certain plays? Let me know and we'll get to it.